Well, so 55 years after Ghana attained the, uh, the status of being a republic, what really have been our achievements? But also, how have we impacted on youth development? Well, we have uh, a number of uh, young people in the studio, three of them. I'm saying a number because we have three uh, in the studio. I have with me the president of the SRC of the Ghana Institute of Journalism, and Romeo Ajay is here. How are you? And also, uh, Andrew Atarawini yeah. is uh, the president for the AUCC. CICC, AUCC. Uh, SRC AUCC, yeah. that's the African University, University College of Communications. of Communications. And Mohammed Anas Mohammed is a development um, manager, that's a business development manager for Fidelity Consult, and they are into investment, portfolio management, etc. He's a big man among uh, the other ones. They are all students. So. <laughs> but the subject of youth permeates what we're about to talk about. Uh, and I have to start with you. Um, you have seen a lot more than they have seen. And you are in the world of work, etc. What do you think impacts the youth foremostly, especially when you finish school? OK, thank you very much. I think uh, the basic problem of the youth now is mentorship. You see that a lot of them go to school, they come out, they don't have jobs. And um, basically, what we in the investment management aspect of life encourage the youth is that whilst you are in school, you need to prepare yourself for the job market. Mm -hmm. You don't wait to come out, then you start writing applications after national service. How do you do this? Whilst you are in school, you need to do internship. Every vacation, you go to work in one institution or the other. You'll be networking, and from there, you get to know all the people who matter. And by the time you complete school, you have a job. Mm. You have so it's, it's something that the youth also need, need to develop and inculcate. Okay. Uh, how do they do that, uh, apart from hearing it from you today? Yes. Uh, basically, the youth, in my opinion, leadership need to encourage them. It's just about inspiration. We at our uh, organization believe in the concept that what the mind can conceive and believe, the mind can achieve. Everybody has his or her talents. So before you can make it in life, you first of all need to identify your talents, your abilities or capabilities, then you develop them. How do you do this? By developing a positive mindset. Believing in something, we are spiritual beings, human beings are spiritual. The link between the human being and God is the spirit, it's life, life is a spirit. So whatever you conceive, then you believe in it, it's going to happen. Mm. So basically, they can do this by first of all being honest to themselves. Don't see what this person is doing and you say, okay, uh, my friend is uh, Romeo. And Romeo is an exercise president, so I must be an exercise president. So ge general life principles that would we, we, we tend to make you have certain rudiments in life you're talking about. Uh, and now I have to uh, get to you, Romeo. Uh, as far as you haven't interacted with your, your kind, um, students and student leaders, etc., um, what really are their aspirations? just to get out of student uh, politics and enter into mainstream politics, is that it? Uh, not exactly. You see most of the youth who are in uh, leadership positions in schools, so what they actually want to do is actually make impact on the lives of their fellow students. And most students especially who want jobs after school. Of course, that's, 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 that's what we've been vibing to. Right from the kindergarten or primary school, you were told that finish school, get a degree, get a job, build a house, get a car, that kind of mentality. So that is a national problem, not necessarily the, uh, uh, just the university area, but mm. it's a national issue about our mentality as a people. And that brings to question the relevance of the Republic Day to our life. What is the thing about Republican citizens of Ghana? Meaning that we have, I mean, true, true independence, we're making our own laws, we're governing ourselves. The, the virtue in that is about independence. So the mentality of the youth for me today is about give me, give me what I can get from the state. And as much as we want the state to also intervene by bringing in places and policies and measures, you expect the youth to actually be independent <laughs> of themselves, think critically of what they can do with their hands. And of course, 
I, I make the case that, look, we're on vacation now, long back for university students across Ghana. Most of them are sitting at home and they're expecting that it gets employment somewhere. But the point is, why can't we go back to our various communities and volunteer to teach our people? I mean, on this long break, you know, so we expect the youth to actually take the lead in that regard. I am looking at how we can revive the concept of patriotism and volunteerism among the youth. And when that is done, likely to go a long way in, in, in imbibing in that some uh, leadership qualities and also addressing the needs of our people in a little, little way that we can. <laughs> it's good that you talk about leadership, but Andrew, uh, do we have a leadership deficit in our country as a young person you've noticed? And do you think, or how do you think that is reflecting on the way uh, or the behavioral patterns of young people? Thank you so much, Roland, and uh, let me wish your viewers a good morning and my co-panelists as well. Um, I would not categorically say we have a leadership uh, deficit, um, but there's a saying that um, where better is needed, good becomes redundant. The fact of the matter is that, just like uh, my colleague said, mentorship is the issue, and on, that is on the part of leadership to ensure that they provide the right set of leadership <clears throat> that is inspiring enough to be able to pull the youth along. That is what we have, you know, so far uh, uh, um, been missing out of in our leadership uh, structure. But also, there's uh, another and a trend of the debate that will talk about the role of, of the youth uh, themselves. Most of the youth today are really failing to think, I'm using that word advisedly, are really failing to think, innovation and creativity. Most of the jobs are not necessarily coming to join news and being employed here and have a regular salary. But you trying to develop a set, be innovative, you understand? And you go back to your community, you find stories, you create a blog, and you begin to write. Joy News can pick you from there because of the kind of stories and the kind of um, line you are towing. That is more innovative. Okay. That gives you joy. So now you're telling us you don't, you don't need employment. You can create. But as far as that is concerned, yeah, yeah. and I know that uh, perhaps uh, uh, Mohammed and Nas Muhammad will be in a better position to answer this, sure. um, we we'll always talk about how, uh, told about how we need to make sure we develop inter entrepreneurial spirits. Yeah. Well, we have many business people across the country. Yeah. They're making tremendous contribution to the economy yeah. and indeed the private sector is the largest employer of people in our country sure. do you think young people uh, are imbibing all those principles of of entrepreneurship because uh, uh, you, you just mentioned that in yeah. in, in one of um, your responses significantly some are doing it and reluctantly some have the talent they, you just see that this person is full of you know creative thoughts Yet he is, they, they are failing to take the advantage. I come from a, a community where, um, just like he's saying, schools are available, but teachers are not there. Have you offered yourself as a way of training, by training to say that I'm going to offer myself to teach the students? And from that, you can begin to say that, look, GS or whichever is the stakeholder that is concerned, this is the deficiency we have here, and I am offering myself. Trust me, you would be able to make any see. We are always quick as young people for the, uh, um, the early gains, you understand? But trust me, the long-standing gains are what is more enduring and even more beneficial. Ask any businessman or any prominent person that has made it in society, and he will tell you that my starting wasn't easy. I had to do this. I had Actually, to do all of, uh, most of them will exactly. tell you that. So yeah. what exactly are we doing as young people? For instance, I started a, commu a community uh, volunteerism work and advocacy for my community. I ensured that I was even at the point beaten, but I relented not. And trust me, some of these, you know, um, uh, opinion leaders and stakeholders who were chasing me for not exposing them started coming by. And trust me, a week to elections, I had two boreholes, and actually one was now in, my, in front mm. of my house. It's good that you mentioned the election. I exactly. see that you'll be interested in politics. Oh. We'll talk about politics, <laughs> though. But, but, but as far as entrepreneurship is, is concerned, now we have a lot more young people who are no more interested in agriculture because the whole industry and sector itself is, the dynamics are changing. Uh, but the point is, if you look at the state of our economy, we need to do a lot more than we're doing. Um, we can't have banks keep employing a lot more absorbing the, the, the chunk of graduates that are, that are coming out of the business schools, etc. We can have a, a lot more private sector people, whether they are normal 
uh, advocates or health people, uh, employing people. So at the end of the day, something needs to come from somewhere. Um, how do the youth need to develop their, their entrepreneurial skills? Okay. Um, there's a reality about um, life that many of the youth don't really get. Basically, we go to school to do things better than people who do not have the chance to go to school. You see that when you look around, people who really have money are business people. Go through the whole world. Those people they call the richest people, they are entrepreneurs. They are not people who, who, who are working in somebody's uh, job. You cannot work for somebody and become financially independent. I was telling some few people at Tema two days ago. When I, we, we were doing our business, we brought some TV sets and other things to sell. Then I hired them to pick them out and back after sales. Then one person made a comment that we, we are supposed to pay them a certain amount. And one person, one of my guys made a comment that, oh, we are paying you this much and you want to say, you are, you are even complaining. Can you make that money if you were not here? Not knowing the team really act into the guy. So after everything, he approached me and he was like, oh, boss, you, you hear, did you hear what that, your boy said and blah, blah. So I, I inquired and he told me exactly. And you know something? He sells coconuts. The gentleman. The gentleman sells coconuts. And he was peeved at the fact that the guy thought selling the coconut would not give him, say, 100 Ghana a day. But he makes more than that. He right? makes 250 Ghana profit, not sales. 250 Ghana profit daily from the sale of the coconut. That's profit. Profit, not... Uh, not just normal sales. Not, normal. not sales. Not sales. Because he's taking it everything out and he does his profit. Beautiful. So we, the youth of today, should understand that education in the past, in the Krumes era, is different from now. In those days, you come out of school, your bungalow is there, your car is there, your job is sitting. How many university graduates did we have at that time? Mm -hmm. Now, there are hundredfuls of them coming out every year. Polytechnics, which are, uh, that are supposed to be training the middle level manpower of the country, they are also going into humanities now. They don't do technical training. So you see that our educational system, basically, is failing the youth. And we, the youth, do not want to take our destiny into our own hands. Politicians will always use us. You see these two people here. If you uh, in the next after few, school, in the next few yeah, years, we'll see them on yeah, TV. On TV, they'll yeah. be talking, they'll contesting a position. Yeah, contesting for political positions. What the signal that gives is that in some few months after their party comes to power, you see them driving big cars. And doing a lot of things. So we think politics is the way to politics, go. Yes, hey. it's, it's actually the problem of Ghana. Okay. Politics is the problem of the youth of Ghana. Well, po po politics is what drives everything in, in many countries. Even though we have the business people, the regulatory environment is uh, s somehow set up by the politicians. Yeah. Okay. So uh, basically, what I would say is that leadership in Ghana, the political leadership, unlike other countries like the UK and the rest, <laughs> if you construct a road, you don't, no one will clap for you. But what measures would you put in place, policies would you put in place to ensure that the day-to-day -day life of the people are improved? Mm. That is what gives them the plus or minus. Andrew, um, Mo 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 Mohammed made a, a point about, uh, no, Romeo, okay. R Romeo, Mohammed made a point about uh, education perhaps not giving the right um, skill set sure. to, the, to the young person. Yeah. And especially when we know that the demographics or the population uh, count, as far as our country is concerned, is saying the youth form a chunk of the population, it means that well, they are going to form the next generation of the top uh, working class, et cetera. Uh, do you think, by all the observations you've made with your interaction with other young people, um, they have the, the right skill set, or they are going to get the right skill sets when they finish school? And how would that also propel them to also be very much creative with whatever education they've had? I see education as the 
the knife for world discussion. Uh, I mean, back in the day... You, you think have, it should be have, the fulcrum of the discussion? Yes. It, it, it should, should be, be the rallying because, point because there's which. a disconnect between our educational system and the creative, those who have technical skills and abilities. I mean, we used to do technical skills in our time, poetry, uh, crafts. I mean, why from the primary schools? And we are babbling into creative skills and abilities. Those things have long gone. Now, the polytechnics that we have in the country are supposed to train people in that regard. There are really courses like marketing and human resource. I ask myself, what are we marketing? What are we being producing in the first place? So there's a disconnect. And so I, I think it should be an overhaul of our educational system where provisions will be made for those who have critical skills and abilities so that they can find themselves along that area. And just to add to that, I also feel that, like I said, the youth need to actually do a bit of uh, innovation and rethinking. That if you finish school, I read marketing, somebody read IT, somebody read economy, somebody read business, something. And we finish school, we all at home saying that we don't have money. I mean, I have a business idea, I don't have money. Meanwhile, my brother Andrew has a business, brilliant business, and he has to go money. I have the marketing skill background. He has the IT background. He has this and that background. Now, why don't you come together, pull our minds together, that synergy, so that he brings his capital. I bring my business idea. He brings his marketing background, his IT background. Then we start something. So I will carry the youth that we should just sit at home and be complaining. Of course, government, the social contract with us, also says responsibility to make sure that they provide enable development for, the, for, for us to actually thrive well. But we also expect us to think out of the box and do something on our own, instead of just doing the blame game thing. You know, so attitude now change is very important. You also expect the state to really intervene in that regard. So the combination of the two, and also an overhaul of our educational system. Uh, the structure has to be rebuilt. Uh, the career that we have, we keep telling our youths that are always thinking and focusing on job, job, job after school. Look at agriculture. I mean, I don't understand why we have over 1,001 river bodies in Ghana. Arable land, fertile as well, just lying fallow. Yes, we import almost everything. We use our scarce resources to import everything. We complain about the dollar since depreciation. Why is that? Because we're importing almost everything. We are not in charge of our economy. 55 years of the Republican status. So you ask yourself, why are these things happening? Of course, you want to point to leadership. But I say that we, as citizens of the land, also have a very key role to play. So there should be a balance of, of the two. Mm. Now, I know I have to go to um, Andrews, but since you are in the field of business and, and finance, then the subject of what the structures are there to support all these ideas, because with, well, we may have venture capital funds, etc. But if, let's say, the, the financial um, institutions are not there put in place to support ideas, then they don't become fruitful in many respects. I think uh, it's known that ideas are but actions. Mm. Every little thing you have... You so they have to take the action. You need to start something. When you start, you get people to support you. But someone will say it's not easy. Look, I've always told people, business is not about capital. It's about a good idea. Really? <laughs> As a young person, you don't need capital to start a business. You need a good business idea. When you get a good business idea, at our age, you move to anybody with a business idea. Don't demand big money. This is my idea. I want you to give me one third of it to buy two, say you want to sell decoders, to buy two, three decoders. Then you start. You make small sales. Then the person will see you are actually doing something. And they'll be pumping more to you. So basically, our forefathers laid a very solid foundation for us. But you know what? We, the youth of today, we want to do things big at the first start or the, at the beginning. We want to do it big. But life, as it were, you need to like, crawl. You need to start moving small, small before you get to whichever stage you are supposed to be. So basically, uh, we, the youth of today, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know, but the, 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 the government, I don't really want to go to government. We need to take our destiny into our own hands. Mm. There, there was this platform we had, uh, the National Youth Platform. Uh, that was somewhere in 2006. Yeah, and true. if you see the kind of people who were part of the platform. That was a and, very good initiative. And I their think. status now. You see the SF director, Dr. Amin Anta. Yeah. He was part of it. Myself. Uh, Samuel, a lot of them. We 
it was it was a platform where the youth came together to discuss issues about youth development, and that culminated into the uh, the national youth document that they launched in 2010. Uh, yeah, 2010. So basically, what I can say is that the youth need to let leadership understand that we are leadership. We are the leaders of today, not tomorrow. We are leadership of today and tomorrow. We make them and we cannot make them. So they, they need to see our interests first mm. before any... Oh, Mohammed, I, I like your positive thinking. I, I think it's, it's in the right thought. Is it, yes, as you add your own comment to that, Andrew, is it because um, as far as... Um, um, the way we conduct politics in our country. Mm. It seemed to perhaps uh, alienate the youth and so not become very much involved mm. or participatory yeah. in decisions that are taken yeah. involving or likely to affect them. Yeah, I think I like the choice of your word participatory because I'm a development communication student and I believe in you know, the two-way uh, approach, um, communication, exactly mm. our approach to issues. Politicians mount platforms and instead of them, just like um, our forefathers, uh, Kwame Nkrumah and Co. inspired us, you know, to come out and give all our best to the nation and make it for the nation. Politicians come in, they tell us they can do all. All you just need is don't waste your time to think, don't waste your time to work, just give me your thumb and I will do all. Well, all politicians yes. around so, the world do that. Uh, well, but they do it with moderation, with a certain uh, orientation that, look, this must be done. But in Africa, can we, in Ghana, can we be certain to say that um, as politicians or within our political circles, we have that discipline? We don't. We don't have discipline. When they come, they go to take loans, run their campaigns. When they finish, they want to find ways of bloating contracts so that they can pay off their loan. And you and I become the people that will bear it. So I think that it's about time, just like my brother said, the youth stand on their feet. But the issue is, when you even want to stand to say that, look, we need to chart this path, Either you are tagged as being an anti of the, uh, of, the, of the ruling government or you are sponsored somewhere and all the name callings that comes with it. It's about time. We need. And see, in AUCC, let me digress a bit to uh, the issue of education. In AUCC, we were supposed to have uh, another campus in Tamale. But management realized that, look, we cannot continually go the theory, 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 theory. There's a huge chunk of these young people out there with some technical expertise. The NVTI is producing a lot of students. Where are they going? The Technical Institute are producing a lot of students. Where are they going? Now, they have also added math, science, and English so that they can actually get second uh, or university uh, education. I'm like, are we running away from the fact that we had a reality and the vision that caused this particular establishment of these institutions? Are we running away from that? So AUCC is saying that, look, the Tamil campus should hold. We are going to bring out a document and a structure that will take these people. And very soon, just like you can bear with me that in all the media houses, if not all, at least a large number of the media houses in Ghana has products of AUCC. We are thinking of bringing out people that can take up the role or the leadership to, 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 to inspire and to motivate you know, their, their colleagues that are yet to come. I also think that as student leaders, we are student leaders, and I would say that as student leaders, we should begin to engage industry more. Um, the field, the man in the field has just spoke about internship and the fact that we need to get space to be able to, you know, get to know what exactly the world of work expect of us even before we step out there. But you go to seek for internship and it is difficult. I have written a lot of letters on behalf of my, my students seeking space for them to do internship. They don't want any remuneration. They just want to get the opportunity to know what is happening in the world of work. But it is difficult. Corporate industry must begin to open up and understand that we are in this together. If you don't help the youth, they would come back depending on you. And that is why we would youth, the youth begin to chase people and say, your social corporate responsibility is not met and all that. Because they don't have anything doing. They depend, you are on my land and I'm not working for you. So of course I would demand my corporate social responsibility, which is actually a peanut and cannot do anything. It's about time we wake up. It's about time the right thinking sets in. It's about time our curriculum in education is structured well to, you know, to meet the demands of the market, the, the world of work. That is the only way we can emancipate ourselves from this you know, demon of uh, um, struggling and you know, unemployment and all that. That, I think, to me, this is my argument regarding that. Mm, Robert, I, I see that you seem to agree with him. I think, uh, 
what I would just add to that, I agree with both of the things she said. What I would just add to that is that the apathy among the youth today is legendary. It's so, so striking and it's amazing. People feel that, okay, there's no hope. I mean, nothing is working. Let's just, just sing along, just follow them. And, and I'm like, let's change that thinking. Let's try and see how we can revive ourselves. I hit ourselves around the course and get a job done. At GRG, for instance, um, we uh, a product of journalism and all that are print from, from there. And one of the things I'm looking at as a research president is actually take students out there to volunteer to see what I call student community service. That you don't only sit in a crowd and write stories about somebody in Kulungugu or mm -hmm. whatever. You must go there and explain for them what is going on on the ground. So they, I'm trying to encourage students on campus to go to the various uh, 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 towns and villages around the country to impact on the I mean, where uh, KTK Ghana, uh, Read for Change, where in the villages across Ghana, uh, Western region, uh, Greater Accra, there are a team of students from GIJ who are currently at uh, Sisala Orange District. I mean, over the years, their BC records have been low, low, very, very poor. The students, the Buhani students in 20, have actually taken the, the step to go there to the impact on the lives of people. And I think, like I said, we shouldn't only be depending on government as much as we have a social contract with us to get a job done. We as youth need to take the initiative. So I'm mentally focused on that, how to rally students around to go and engage the community so that we as journalists being trained from GIJ, we'll get to know the challenges that people face on the ground and we don't just sit in a cry and write about them. What that does is that it, it, it impact on us, I mean, seven leadership. You get to know what is people are actually going through on the ground. We become a leader one day. You can speak the language of the people. You don't sit there and be, I mean, uh, stealing the, the, the money from the state, but you actually go there to understand that these are the issues that people go through. Well, Hamid, do you think that's a problem we have? Um, the way we conduct politics in our country and um, perhaps uh, the ruling class not uh, empathizing with the needs of the people. And so perhaps don't know the needs of the youth. Well, they may be having rhetorics, but really uh, don't know and so don't take the right actions or steps. Basically, it's true. But do we have a national youth anthem? Which no. Ghana has a national youth yeah, anthem. Arise Ghana. Arise Ghana youth for your country. Yeah, the nation the demands your devotion. Yeah. Let us all unite yeah. and uphold her. You see, yeah. we, we have enough basis to take the country to where it's supposed to be. Yeah. Yeah. We are the leaders. We are the majority. So if majority in democracy carries the vote, then we are in the majority. So I, and our national anthem gives us the right to, 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 to do whatever we want for the nation. Look at this lady at Quabre, or uh, what is that, that, that lady? The lady who won the primaries. The primaries. Look at the innovation she's brought into NPP. In the past, I think she started this go to visit Nanado in the office thing, and people are following. Parliament, all parliamentary candidates are following. You see that the lady is well cut. She, she knows exactly what she's doing. Despite those comments that came after her election, she stood her ground and she's working. So basically what I'm saying is that we must be, the leadership must be us. We must be our own leaders. Okay. We, the youth, must be our own leaders. And that's where, um, well, we end our discussions on the subject of uh, the youth and uh, what really the policy and the advocacy is towards their development as we mark our Republican status today. And we have had in the studio Romeo Aja, SRC president for GIJ, and also with the AUCC SRC president Andrew Atarawini. And thanks for joining me. And also Mohammed Anas Mohammed is a business development manager with Fidelity Consult. And thanks for joining me, young people. The pleasure. All right. Nice. And now we we'll we'll take our break. Next, we'll be having AM Talk. We'll be having in the studio Hatman Uswajman and also uh, Samia Yabankrumah.